This film is a follow-up on my Orwell project and where I've got to on that. Um, following up on where I've got to with my Turing bomb, um, which I've been trying to replicate in software so I can run it on the Orwell computer. Uh, this all came about from my, my Enigma watch project. Um, the original idea was to actually recreate the bomb after I saw the the imitation game film, I got quite interested in how it worked and wanted to understand exactly how it worked. Um, I'd seen it working at Bletchley Park sort of Christmas last year when I was over there and didn't really understand it that much then um, but in the last few months I've spent an awful lot of time trying to get to grips with it, understanding how it works and understanding how I could build my own version in software. So I've collected all sorts of books and booklets and basically that stack of papers and notes and bits and pieces are all the the explanations about how it works. Um, this little book is the one that you can get from the the uh, the gift shop at Bletchley Park, and you can order it online as well. And this is like a really simple introduction to the bomb. It's kind of it's it's like a kids' book version of of how the Turing bomb works. Um, this book, the um, the Turing bomb report, uh, which is called report number four, is actually a very, very good description of how the bomb works. Um, I actually found a mistake in one of the wiring diagrams here, but uh, the rest of the information is all excellent. Explains it really well. Uh, the other thing that's very useful is floating around. There are copies of an original report from 1942, uh, 1944, sorry done by the, um, the US Army who were running their own versions of the bomb and they came along late of course um, but very very quickly picked up what it did and how it worked and they wrote this report which I believe was some sort of document that was used to help train up the operators and this also explains how it works and it has some very good technical drawings of some of the actual the, the pieces of the bomb as well as these test menus um, and this has been very, very useful. And I've actually been able to run some of those, those test menus, but we'll get to that in a second. So the first thing I did to make sure I understood how it works is actually wrote the logic for a bomb in BASIC, of all things. Um, bit of a silly language to use, really, but that's what all our runs, so that's what I wrote it in, just to get the BASIC algorithm correct to, to make sure I fully understood how it worked. And I did that, and I got it running. Um, I got something running anyway that gave me some of the stops that actually worked and I um, Because I had it running in basic it was very slow so I ended up porting it to C uh, Which runs a lot faster of course and was a lot more useful and I actually found I had some mistakes in my algorithm There are a few things I was doing wrong which I can explain in the the text of, the, of my my website um, but basically where I'm at now is I have what I believe is a correct implementation of the bomb algorithm running in BASIC uh, and also running in C. So what I've been testing it with is the, the same menu that they use to demonstrate the bomb at Bletchley Park. So that's what I've been using as my main test. Now. It's going to be hard to see, but we've sort of got computers all over the place here. Uh, if we look here, I don't think it's going to come out very well on the on the video. But this this is the basic listing um, for the bomb code. It's it's not too big. I mean, once you work it out, there's not a huge amount of code there. So this is the basic code, and what I've actually done is I've previously uploaded that code to Orwell. And that's what's running on them now. Uh, you probably won't be able to see, but it's actually stepping through the sequences now. And this has been running for nearly 50 hours. And out of the 17,576 different positions it has to step through, it's now up to about 245, 246. So it's got a little way to go. And that's taken two and a half days. So, obviously BASIC isn't going to cut it. Um, what I 
actually have done is to prove that it worked, I changed the code and because you're going through all 17,000 steps, it doesn't matter where you start. So I can actually start where I know it's going to stop and that was how I could prove that it worked. And we can sort of show that. So this, this code is just, um, just basic code. So we can copy that and it'll run in almost any sort of basic um, from, from the 80s. So it's actually very, very similar to Applesoft Basic. And that's of course because the Basic in Orwell was based on the original Microsoft Basic, which I've ported to run on Orwell. And the original Microsoft Basic is what the original Applesoft Basic was based on. So they're very similar. So I can actually just paste the code in here. Um, and I just need to make a couple of minor changes. So if we... It's a bit tricky trying to do it on the laptop with one hand. Um, the major difference I found is between OL and the Applesoft Basic is I've got a clear screen command and Apple use home. So if we find that and change that. Now the, the, the basic code I've written is, is hard coded um, to, to that Bletchley Park menu. Um, it's easy enough to change the code, it's sort, of, it's sort of in data statements. So if we go back down to the bottom, I know none of this is really going to be very visible, but hopefully we'll be able to see something happening. Um, at the bottom I've got all sorts of data statements which set up the menu and I'll explain this a bit more in my in the write-up on the blog as well but one of the things I can change is where we actually start running from and I know with the Bletchley Park menu one of the first stops is DKX so I can actually start this one running from EKX and it'll then step to the next position which is the one that we want to find so if we run this um, it sort of goes through and it gives you all the um, the setup data in here, tells you where it's running and that's actually sitting there now running um, running through the combinations. It's not printing anything out, I can actually have it print a whole lot of debug information but it makes it an awful lot slower. So eventually that should come to a stop um, which is one of the correct stops for that menu, that particular menu. Now that's very very slow so even in Applesoft Basic, that's slow. So, on, there we go, that's, that's the, the stop. Um, and then when it stops, it'll tell you here what the indicator drum settings were, and it shows you the test register. So we can see that this stop is DKX, and the register is showing Q, which matches what the um, Bletchley Park menu shows. So that will quite quite happily just keep running but you can see that's quite slow so that was the time taken to do one one iteration um, and obviously that's that's not really going to cut it so what I did is if we change to this this is a version I've written in C and this will run through all of the combinations a hell of a lot faster so we can run this um, this is also using menus that uh, configurable so I, I can, can easily change the menu it's basically all specified in a little text file so um, that sort of detail I'll put on my blog as well but if we run this which apparently it says it is running no it's not So we give it a file name and again it shows the, um, the different setup information. Uh, my text file kind of follows the, a very similar format to the format they used for actually wiring up the physical bombs during the war. So if we start this running now it should run through all the combinations. So it's found the first one and then it comes up with the second one. So the first stop is DKXQ and the second stop is FANK um, and that took 
10 and a half seconds. So that's a lot faster. So what I want to do now, now that I've proved that it works and that my algorithm is correct, is my plan is to build a small physical version of the bomb. Now I'm not going to build it with all 200 and whatever it is drums that they've got. So the idea is to actually build it using just with the three indicator drums, but have them moving the same way they would on a real bomb as it's solving the um, finding the solution. So I've started putting together this. Obviously it's a horrible bird's nest of wires and bits and pieces. Basically I'm going to build the unit in two parts. So the actual code is very very simple C code and um, the idea is that I will run that on this which is a, a Raspberry Pi, uh, actually a Raspberry Pi 2. So I never got anywhere past using my original Raspberry Pi as anything more than a media player so it's going to be interesting to see how how that one works. But the C code I've got should be able to run on that easily and I'm hoping that it'll be fast enough that it can run quick enough that it'll run in real time the same as a, as a real bomb. So given that my laptop can solve that in 10 seconds and um, the original the mechanical bomb takes something like 20 minutes to do the same thing I'm thinking that the Pi should be fast enough. So what we've got here is the mechanical part of that. So I'm going to have the Raspberry Pi running the actual code and doing the solving and it's going to be talking to the the mechanical part which is going to be driving the the indicator drums I'm going to build. And so this is basically driven with an Arduino down here and I've got three um, motor drivers and three stepper motors. Now I've sort of borrowed these these indicator drums are, are printed off from the um, the online bomb simulator that I'll, I'll put a link to and I just borrowed those to to create these. But basically what this is going to do is recreate the motion of the the indicator drums on, on the original bomb. And so if we set this running, it's basically running through all the different combinations. Now, it's rattling a bit. One of the interesting things about the, the real bomb, the physical bomb, is if you watch it very, very closely, you'll note that the wheel stepping isn't quite what you'd expect. Um, Obviously each wheel has got the 26 letters of the alphabet and they run through and they sequence through all the combinations of those three wheels. Um, in the software what I'm doing is I'm just iterating through them all. On the physical bomb it's actually doing something a little bit different. And this doesn't really come out in any of the books I've got. It's only something that you, you sort of realize when you watch it quite closely. Um, and I've also actually been in touch with uh, the people who rebuilt the bomb and they've been quite helpful just answering some of my silly questions and pointing out some of the details about it for me and one of the details is that the second wheel here is stepping you would expect it to step once every time the first wheel does a complete revolution but that's not actually the case it's actually doing a revolution and a half and the reason for this is because it was a physical machine and the wheels had to mechanically carry round, the first wheel would do one cycle and then while the second and third wheels were stepping it wouldn't measure for half a cycle. So it means that it does one cycle, the second wheel steps and for half a cycle it isn't, the machine isn't actually doing anything. It's just moving to the next position. And then once it moves half a cycle it then starts going again. Now the thing is, as long as you cover all the combinations, it doesn't matter what letter you start at. So the first iteration will go from A to Z, and then the second one will step. And then while that's stepping, this will go back around to, to, um, to M, and then it'll start measuring from N round to M again. Then the second one will step, and it'll wait another half cycle, so it gets back to A, and then goes from A to Z again. And so it means that that first wheel is kind of doing this extra half step all the time, or extra half revolution. And it took quite a lot of fiddling around to actually get that to work, and to get these steppers to, um, to behave in this manner. I did look at the, the different Arduino stepper libraries, 
that you can get. Um, the one that comes built in isn't much good because it only runs one motor and I need to run three. Uh, there's a couple of alternate libraries around and there's one called Excel Stepper which is to do with accelerating stepper motors. Um, I find that found that one terribly difficult to use and the documentation wasn't very good so I quickly gave up on that. And I don't need to use acceleration anyway so it's probably not the right library to use. Uh, there is another library called Custom Stepper I believe and I also had a few difficulties trying to get that to work. Um, so in the end I just basically wrote my own. And it's quite tricky to get it to work because these are 200 degree stepper motors. I'm actually running them in half step mode so they're 400 steps per revolution. And you have to step 26 positions um, each revolution. And of course 26 doesn't divide into 200 or 400 very well so it's not an even number of steps per revolution. So you have to be able to handle um, changing the number of steps for each letter so that you end up exactly back in the same position. And then what I'm actually doing is it's running through the sequence of steps to drive the first motor which is pretty much moving continuously. Um, and then I, I effectively and together the drive signals for the second and third motors and enable them to sync up with the first motor at the, at the appropriate times. And that is also quite fiddly because stepper motors run through a sequence of steps which is where they get their name and you have to follow the sequence exactly. So when the second one is, is ready to step it has to has to, the, the next step that it takes has to be the follow-on from the last step it took the last time it moved. You, you can't suddenly just start part way through the sequence because the motor won't move how you expect it to. So there's a lot of fiddly code in there to do with syncing up the stepper motors so that they all move correctly. Um, and that's actually working pretty well now. So if we stop that, I've just got a switch here so I can stop and start them. Uh, the stopping follows the the physical bombs behavior which is that you stop and then it, 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 it flows around and then catches up. So if we change the Arduino code, um, that was it running continuously. If we, we can upload new code to it here. And then if we start it up again, the way it'll work in the, the actual physical one I want to build is the Raspberry Pi will tell it when to step and tell it when to stop. So I've just got that simulated with a, with a push button here. And so it'll be able to tell it to step when it needs to. Um, and theoretically it should be able to do that fast enough that I can run this at full speed which is around about one revolution um, per second on that fastest drum. So this is all obviously just a mock-up at the moment. It's a horrible bird's nest of wires. What I actually want to do is build um, a little a, a housing, probably, oh, I'm not sure how tall, a, a bit over 12 inches tall, maybe a bit bigger, 18 inches and build replicas of the, the actual drums that are used on the real bomb, the actual indicator drums. So if we look here, um, this is out of that army report and this is kind of a, a diagram of what the, the drums look like. Um, and this is printed at three quarter scale and I've done it to three quarter scale because I actually have these which are their um, sweet tins. So these are basically the exact right size to make three-quarter scale drums. And so my plan is to to build replicas of these to this scale and then these will be mounted in some sort of bomb type housing um, with copying the style of the original the original bombs as much as possible and that's what will be driven by the stepper motors. So it'll be a nice animated version of the machine. So now that I, I have the, the hardware pretty much sorted out, um, I need to look at porting the code so it'll run on the on the Raspberry Pi. 
and I need to learn how you actually use the inputs and outputs on the Raspberry Pi. Um, and I need to build the the physical version with my with my three sweet tins here. So that's where I'm at at the moment. I'll update my blog with a bit more technical information um, with links to all the different documents I've used and the different the different websites I've used and the all the different information that I've been able to find um, and also try to explain a bit about how the bomb works but it's really quite it's very elegant it's it's quite clever um, but it's very difficult to explain it to people I've tried a number of times trying to explain it to friends of mine and either I'm really bad at explaining or it's hard to explain but they they just don't quite get it and it has literally taken me months of fiddling to really understand how it works and to understand the quirks and to actually get it to work to this degree so um, it'll be interesting to actually build a, a real model of it a real working model and I'll update when I've done that